G'day folks, Scott here. Today I'm reviewing the Arcade 1UP Street Fighter Cab with a Raspberry Pi mod. I had no intention of buying one of these units when they first came out. I love the idea of them, but for the cost, especially here in Australia, to get only a few games, I didn't see it as good value. Here, they are $700 recommended retail, which is immensely more than their cost in America and nowhere near balances out to the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. But I waited, bided my time, and eventually one came up at a good enough price that I picked it up mainly motivated by the fact that other YouTubers have started modifying these cabinets, putting a Raspberry Pi in and putting heaps of games in it as opposed to what came with it. And I found that very appealing. So a huge shout out to ETA Prime. He made an amazing video that detailed the parts you needed, how you installed them, how he went about doing his ideas. I was his religiously I bought the parts he recommended his video was very well put together very concise showed you precisely what needed to be done and I found it very very helpful I basically put this cabinet over next to my television had that video on YouTube and I just bounced between them as I went so booting it up another major help and great idea I got from YouTube was people who recommended this RetroPie image um, it's from a website called Arcade Punks and it's the 32 gigabyte arcade only attract mode from Wolf and Oz. Uh, 32 gigabyte includes like 2,800 games. It's great. Uh, great selection. Everything works really well um, and I highly recommend it. There's a few on there and probably do your research to find the one that suits you the best. But for me, this seemed to tick all the boxes I wanted. So that's what I went with. In relation to mods as well, obviously the buttons, um, I replaced the sticks and the buttons. Uh, all the YouTubers are right in the fact that the sticks that came with the Arcade 1UP are trash. Um, I couldn't play Street Fighter properly at all, I had nothing but problems, I had problems doing special moves, I just hated them. So this kit um, was like 60 bucks and it works really well. Um, the light up buttons are great, the one thing, few things I did differently where ETA Prime drilled holes here and here for the select buttons. I didn't like the idea of that, uh, so I went with putting them down in the front here and here. Um, it's more like you know a coin slot anyway, and although it caused me some grief with wiring because I didn't consider the length of the wiring and stuff, I had to stuff around a little bit fitting the encoders later, it came up really good, and it looks really good, and I'm really happy I did it. Okay, so in the back, I did most of the modifications exactly as ETA Prime instructed. Um, in here, we've got obviously the LCD conversion kit to run at HDMI. The only difference is the uh, two USB encoders that I put there and there because I had put the buttons around in the front instead of on the top of the board, I needed to have them lower for wiring. Now with the wiring, I did a pretty shit job of it. It's my first time wiring buttons. Uh, there's things I would have done differently in retrospect, but it works and it came out okay. Now in the bottom, this is where I differed from the way he did the mod. Um, he used that original mono speaker, which I thought was kind of useless and defeated the point of doing this. Uh, so this system here, the Logitech Z213, was like $29. It was such good value, fits perfectly. I haven't put the back on yet, obviously, because I'm still checking that everything's right and that uh, um, you know, I haven't stuck it all down yet, but basically the way I've done this and the reason that makes this speaker system so good and effective is this control unit. With this control unit, it's got a long enough cable that I can run it on the outside of the box and stick it to the outside of the cabinet so I can adjust volume as I go. Most modifications I've seen on this unit have been done with everything internally. Um, ETA Prime and a few others have used a uh, almost like a car audio amplifier to install internally that has all volume controls, which means they've got to get in the back of the cabinet every time they want to adjust everything. And one thing you find with this many games is they will have vast differences with their sounds. 
So having this control unit outside of the cabinet and being able to adjust it whenever you want without having to get inside there is such a great thing that it was totally worth the extra money. Um, apart from that, everything's the same. Got the Raspberry Pi back in there um, and that's it. In relation to the build quality of these cabinets, the sides are nice, thick, solid wood. Obviously the control deck's nice and thick. The marquee's nice and thick, but all the top, the back, the front, and the, the marquee down low where the Street Fighter artwork is, they're all really thin, trashy plywood. Um, so that obviously reduces the cost, because really, you know, if you're gonna buy an arcade machine, you're gonna spend huge money to get a full-size, full-build one. You know, you can buy ones with up to four control decks, fully done out with MAME, but here in Australia, they're usually closer to $3,000. And this whole thing, from start to finish, I made it around 800 bucks all up from all the money I spent to get it up and running. And I think for what it is, it's fantastic value. Uh, one thing in Australia is nobody sells the Arcade 1UP Rises, um, which was kind of a pain. I couldn't get one. This table was $9 at Ikea. It's 45 centimeters tall. It brings it up to the right height. Uh, for now, it's a great solution. So I'm not gonna do a full review and preview of the Raspberry Pi image. There's plenty of people who have already got that online and will do it better than I would anyway. But it's very comprehensive. There's stacks of stuff in there. About the only stuff it doesn't do is things like Tekken and 3D games because the Raspberry Pi emulation just doesn't cope with that yet. But everything else is on there and it works great. Um, you know, I like this one. Uh, reason it was a big thing was it had the Daphne games on there. So getting Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair 2 and Space Ace was a big deal for me. Um, but you know, all your Neo Geo stuff, Atari Classics, Capcom, all the good games are there. For the most part, they all run really, really well. Some of them tend to bog down a little bit, but it's pretty rare. Um, and I find it's, it's worked fantastic for what it is. I've had no problems with it. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, and overall, you know, it's been a great time. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of attract mode. Uh, although I like the idea of the different images and the videos running all the time, I find most of the videos, especially when they're big, are kind of low res. And one thing I love about running an emulation station is this screensaver feature. This just randomly loads footage of all the 2600 games and just runs them one after the other. And so I just leave it running in the background all the time, usually with a sound off if anyone, you know, wife and kid are around, but sometimes with. And the great thing is, sometimes you see something come up and you're like, man, I forgot about that game, that's really cool, because going through 2600 games, it's really hard to find something. And all of a sudden something comes up, you're like, huh, I remember that, I really wanna play that. And it's just as simple as, oh, you know, I'm gonna go over there, yep, I wanna check that game out. You just hit player one, and it automatically loads it and brings it up. You don't have to scroll through and get them, it just it just works. Um, I don't know what I just loaded, a basketball game from Neo Geo. Uh, <laughs> be hilarious if it didn't work. Um, but yeah, it's a great feature, and I love the screensaver mode, so that I leave it on that all the time for that very reason. Um, yeah, all the games load really well. You know, like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through, uh, you know, everything. Um, another thing was the uh, select coin button also doubles as a hotkey, so you just escape of any game by pressing that and play one together. Takes you back to the menu. What I liked also, apart from the fact that I kept the cost down as opposed to buying a machine that was preloaded and gigantic and heavy, was the do-it-yourself nature, although I was terrified doing it in the first place and it freaked me out doing things I'd not ever done before, getting it done and being successful and not having any problems was a great sense of accomplishment and I'm fully stoked with how it all turned out. So yeah, I think that's got about all I've got to say. I strongly recommend doing it. Um, if you manage to get one without paying too much, go the Raspberry Pi method. It's very good at what it does. And uh, that's all. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Check out my other videos and see you later.